just I abbreviate my presentation to a couple of statements with regards to the prospects of the life insurance market in Serbia. We have already seen in the uh, previous presentations that the Serbian life insurance market seems to lag behind the rest of the region. We spend less money on life insurance than people in other countries, other comparable countries do. Why is this the case? I think there is a, a number of reasons. The first of them, in my opinion, is that in this country there is still relatively little savings capacity. Most of the population in this country still struggles to make ends meet every month, so they have relatively little money to put aside for savings. Secondly, there is, not only in Serbia, but almost all over continental Europe, little savings culture. Continental Europe, in general, uh, consists of countries which pretend that they will take care for the financial needs, old aid pension schemes and things like that for their citizens. This is very different in Anglo-Saxon countries. So uh, people in continental Europe and also in Serbia, they are not for generations used to saving for themselves for their old age. Thirdly, I think that one very important reason for the small, of small amount of money being spent in life insurance is problems of trust. There's little trust in, in uh, life insurers in their long-term promises. We see this in this slide. Uh, in this country, most of the savings are put into bank deposits. These are short-term, these are very flexible, people can take the money away as soon as they need it or as soon as they start to fear that something bad might happen, they withdraw the money, they switch it into other currencies, and so they can react quickly. This is not the case with life insurance. Life insurance is a long-term promise. It's not easy to get out of it once you're in. If you surrender your life insurance policy, you have to pay penalties. And if you stay in and it's a long-term promise, you cannot not be so sure uh, that in the end you will get what you have been promised. And this lack of trust uh, regards not only the micro microeconomic uh, uh, environment, so little trust in the companies. It's also a macroeconomic component. Uh, people have seen currencies come and go, and uh, so uh, to take, a take out a life insurance uh, policy in, in a local currency, it's, um, it's a bet. It's a bet, and, and people are not yet ready to take this bet. This is the actual situation. On the other hand side, I think it's absolutely obvious that there is big need for individual savings, especially for old age savings. People in Serbia, as in most other continental European uh, countries, very much depend with regards to their old age on state-run pension schemes. State-run pension schemes are all based on uh, the pay-as-you-go pay uh, principle. That means the younger generation contributing to the state-run pension scheme pays for the pensions paid out for the, to the older generation. But a demographic revolution is already ha happening. Uh, there will always be more elderly people and always be less people in, in, in working age. And this happens in a time when our state-run pension schemes are already in trouble. And uh, this demographic re revolution will happen at times when state finances are already weakened by chronical overspending of the states. 
and moreover, they have recently, recently been weakened further by the worldwide financial crisis. So there is urgent need to develop private old age savings. Saving type products like Unilink, Index Link, Universal Life, uh, the long term aspect kicks in and some of these products uh, are very sophisticated and in order to offer them to the market in a, in a serious way, you need access to worldwide, very big and very liquid financial markets. So I think we, it will take some time to develop further the life savings connected uh, market in, in this country. 10 minutes. Just maybe one closing statement. When we develop the life insurance market, I would suggest that we avoid one important pitfall, and this is the cost trap. Traditional life insurance in many markets has been killed by a bloated cost base. Life insurance is mostly about savings. Savings is about return on the savings made by our clients. So it is our obligation to keep costs as low as possible. Costs in life insurance companies consist of administration costs and distribution costs. This country has relatively high costs in the insurance sector already on the non-life side. If we now start to develop life insurance, let, be, let us be very attentive to the cost base and let us not commit the error which has been committed in many markets which have big life, life insurance uh, segments. And this is even more true for distribution costs. In many markets, Germany, Italy, Austria, Japan. Uh, there, have been, there has been a big life insurance boom in the 1970s, 1980s, early 1990s. And their contribution costs were running very, very high. Contribution, co uh, uh, distribution costs ate up 100%, sometimes more than the first year's premium of, of our clients. This was generously financed by tax breaks, which these states granted on life insurance. I'm very much in favor of tax incentivization for life insurance, but it should not be abused in order to finance, to finance bloated distribution costs. I think cost control effectiveness and cost transparency are just fair and we will develop a sizable and sustainable life insurance market in this country only if we give to our clients a fair offer. Thank you very much.